Hey family, thank you all so much for tuning in. If you are new here to the channel, my name is Millie. I am a teacher and revelator of God's word. I am also a life coach and mentor who's been placed in your path as a destiny helper to help usher you into your greatness, which is your purpose. And ultimately that will lead to your destiny fulfilled. So I'm so excited that you're here. Go ahead and subscribe. And those of you who have been chugging along, welcome back. I'm happy to speak to you all today and really to share um, my testimony as far as business is concerned. So we're going to talk about some kingdom business today and how do you know that God is having you to move on from a secure job, so you think, or leave your job and start this, this business. A lot of you, God is calling to be kingdom entrepreneurs, kingdom CEOs, okay? It's kingdom time. And so it's foreign to some of you. And I um, actually released a message in the community today talking about using what's in your hands. So some of you are at a place where you don't even know what God is calling you to do. Others, you know the gifts that are in you, but you don't know how to start this thing. You don't know how to start the business that God is asking you to start. And so this is, again, specifically for those of you who are called to be entrepreneurs. And so I want to go ahead and share my story and how God did this for me and how I was able to know when it was time to leave my secure job, so to speak, and trust him and step out on faith and do what it was that he was showing me to do because he had so much more for me. So I have about four points I want to cover to just kind of break up uh, my testimony a little bit so that it's not too long for the sake of time and also so that it, it gives a sense of clarification and order for those of you who have been going through this and you don't know what's going on. So I just want to touch on these points so that it, um, you know, it brings you into an awareness. There it is, because God does everything in order. And so you've been going through this process and not understanding the process that you're going through. So this is why you've been stuck. This is why um, a lot of you just in fear because you know it's time, but you don't know how to trust God in this way. So, so the first point I want to touch on is your awakening. So God's going to awaken you. He's going to shake your life to awaken you. And that's what he did for me in 2016. He has shaken up everything I had built outside of him. To my knowledge, I thought I was with him, right? And so it is with you. Like you, you thought you were doing things with God. Some of you, you know you were doing things out of your own ambition and you're coming to into right relationship with God. So he's shaking up everything, these Ishmaels that we recreate, right? And so for me, my Ishmael was my marriage and my career, okay? So I'm just gonna uh, just kind of stick with the career part since we're talking about business. But in 2016, as my marriage was shaking, the Ishmael I created and my life was shaking as far as career and just me not knowing my purpose and what was going on, I got two direct words from the Lord. He told me in regards to my marriage that you got to let him go to see who I am. So he was saying, let go of my husband at the time to see who he is, who God is and what he can do. That's what he was telling me. So when I got that direct word from the Lord, I was obedient in that and separated from my uh, then husband at the time. And then the, the word he gave me for business was, I have something beyond your wildest dreams all you have to do is believe. And, and he wasn't only just speaking business, he was speaking my life, but really in the area of business at that moment as well. And so I held on to these two words. And so it is with you. Whatever God has spoken to you, you hold on to the word, even though you don't understand what that means, what that looks like, okay? This is why it's so important to have your relationship with God so that you can hear from him. So these words, I didn't share with anybody. I just held on to him for me because I knew my father was telling me these things. He spoke them right into my spirit, right? And so as I was obedient in separating from my then husband, I began to look for another job because I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm going to be obedient. I know you're not playing with this. And actually he caused something supernatural to happen to let me know that he wasn't playing when I was dragging my feet in regards to the marriage portion. My God. And so after I let that go, I'm like, okay, 
let me look for another job because he's leaving, you know, the in, half the income in the house is leaving. I don't want to lose anything. I want to maintain this lifestyle that I've built on the outside with all the finer things in life, right? And so I was like, I don't want to lose. I don't deserve my credit to be all tore up and all this stuff. You know, I, I'm not, you know, I've, I've done my best, Lord. Like this was my plea to God. Like, you know, I don't want to lose that. So let me just get another job so that I can make it, right? Oh, God's so good. And so in that, I began to search for another job. And I had three opportunities come up. And each time I went on an interview and, and made it to like the face-to-face -face and was pretty confident I would get the job. And actually, let me say this, all three of the jobs that I, I went for, they were all paying like 10,000 more a year. Okay, so this would have been perfect for me to just be able to get into one of those jobs where I didn't have to worry. I didn't have to worry about losing nothing. You know, it would be no more days of having more month than money. Come on, somebody. You got more month at the end of the month than you do have money. Come on. And so I'm like, all right, Lord, this this has to be it. And each time I would go on these interviews, the Lord kept telling me, I have something better for you. So I'm like, okay. So that was the first time I didn't get the job. The second time, the, the next company, he kept saying, I got something better for you. And I'm like, okay, maybe it's another one. I didn't get that job. So then the third job I went to, and I mean, this one was a shoe-in, like the dress code was relaxed. It was doing the same thing I was doing, which was in like finance. This is the type of job I had with no degree, okay? So this is how God will do it for you. He will place you where you need to be placed in, in your wilderness, okay? He will still make rivers in the desert, in that dry place. Your dry place is your job. Your dry place is your marriage. Your dry place is your relationship. Your dry place is you're in the wrong city. Whatever your dry place is, God is still gonna, gonna provide for you, okay? And so <laughs> this job that I thought was it, I thought God kept saying, I have something better because it was a better corporate job, okay? So this last one was a shoe-in, as I said. I thought I was gonna be hired. They pretty much told me I had the job, offered me to not hear from them for, for two weeks, right? So then they finally reached out and was like, we went with someone else, but we have another position we want you to try out for. We, we know you'll be a great company fit, you know, all the jargon, right? So I'm like, okay, I told you, Lord, like, all right, this is the better, like, it's a better position. I get to travel a little bit and things like that. And God was like, mm -mm, I have something better. So here I am just going in my own way, my own understanding, went to the interview for that position. They were like, we need a person right now, like today, like we're gonna be calling you in the next day or so. Did not hear back from the people, called them at the end of the week and asked them what's going on, only for the hiring manager to say they went with someone else. And so I asked like, okay, well, you know, was it something I did? Can you give me some feedback? Cause I am out here interviewing, like, you know, and she said, no, we just thought you would be bored with the position. And I was like, what? So even they had all these great things to say about me, great company fit and blah, 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 blah. She said she thought I would be bored with the position. So that told me I knew it was God. That woman didn't know why she wasn't hiring me, okay? But I know why, because God was shutting the doors. And so he brought me to another sense of frustration to where I had did all I could do. So it's like, when you've done all you can, stand. So that's where I was. I was standing like, okay, Lord, I've tried in my own strength. What are you going to do? How are you going to do this? How are you going to fix this? What is this better you have for me? Like I'm yelling at God, right? And so this brings me to point number two, my God. He's going to reveal who, what is in your hands. He's going to reveal what's in your hands. So he began to reveal to me to pick back up what he had gifted me with, which was um, in the beauty industry. I was a cosmetologist. And so I was thinking like, well, how am I going to go back to doing hair? Like I've been out of the industry for seven years, you know, all the clientele that I had and the little bit that I held on to, you know, some of you in the industry, if you're listening, you got those clients who just won't go to nobody else. So, you know, I had them coming to the house and I'm doing their hair at the house and stuff, but then that faded away because 
my life changed. You know, corporate America was taking over and the, the demands and then I had a baby and, you know, it was just, I couldn't do it anymore, right? And so I'm like, Lord, how am I supposed to balance an eight to five, really, that's what it was, and go try to work in the shop and build a clientele like this isn't making sense, right? And so in the process of me trying to figure it out, I didn't mention this, um, I had started like this online boutique with my sister. And so in that, I knew deep down, it was just something I was doing because I was trying to find a way out of the rat race. I just knew that it was time for me to get out, like that awakening, that awakening. So, so it is with some of you, you've been trying to put your hands to, you know, maybe it is an online boutique or a store, or you're trying to, you know, maybe open a restaurant or, you know, maybe do, um, I don't know, whatever it is. And that's okay. God's going to, he's going to show you that that's not the thing because you're not going to have peace about it. It's not going to, it's something in you that's going to know that like, this is a good thing to make money or whatever, but it's not the God thing. I'm still not fulfilled. And that's how it was with me, with the boutique, with my sister. So anyway, I ended up uh, shutting that down. But at the time that we had that boutique, we would do little vendor events and stuff like that. And I ended up meeting a young lady who bought a, a purse from us and she was doing eyelashes. And so God brought this woman back to my remembrance during this time because we were following each other on Instagram and stuff like that. And so I kept seeing her post pop up and she's doing these classes and things like that. And I had never even thought about doing eyelashes. I'm thinking like, how do I get back to hair? Like that's what's in my hands. And so God just kept pressing that on me. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna make the investment and take the class. Now, let me tell y'all, I said before, I had more month than I had money. I didn't know how I was going to pay for this training class, which I think was about $600. That was a lot of money to me back then. And it's a lot of money to some of you right now. So I understand that, right? And so I'm like, Lord, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but this is what I felt him showing me to do. And so as I was still praying about it and pondering on it. And I knew God kept highlighting it to me. So, so it is with some of you all, God keeps highlighting that thing to you, whether whatever industry is in, he's highlighting it to you for a reason. Okay. Whether it's Instagram commercials, uh, billboards, wherever you're seeing this thing constantly, he's waking you up to it. Okay. My God. And so I ended up reaching out to the young lady and I paid like half of, um, uh, the deposit to do the lashes, even though I have my, my hair license and I could do it because I was licensed by the state, but I never had done eyelashes before. So I'm like, let me go and get a little training and take the class and support her because she supported us in our business. Right? So let me just see what it's about. And you guys, the day of the training, actually the night before, I was going to cancel it because I didn't have the rest of my money. I had it, but it was for a bill. Come on, somebody. I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. I had it, but it was for a bill. And so God deals with me in dreams. And some of you, he's been showing you things in your dreams as well. So the morning of the class, the Lord gives me this vision because he knew I was about to cancel it. Then here comes the enemy in my ear. You need that money for a bill. Your light's going to get cut off. Don't be stupid. You know, like he's throwing all the fiery darts, right? My God. And so in this dream that morning, I had made up in my mind the night before, like, I'm just going to have to lose that. I think it was like $250 I paid on the deposit. I'm like, I can't do it, right? I'm in, I'm asleep. And the Lord shows me, and it's so funny, I, I chose to put on green today and this wasn't planned, but in the dream, I, I, wore, I used to wear this, different green shirt that I had to work at the time. And so in the dream, he showed me myself with that green shirt on and I was in my bathroom and I was looking at myself in the mirror, but my eyes were closed. And I immediately thought like, how can I see myself and my eyes are closed? So I kind of dropped down like below like the cabinets because I was scared. Like, how can I see myself and I can't see, you know? And so then I slowly began to creep up above the cabinet to see what was going on. And my eyes started doing this, like fluttering. And so when I woke up, 
the enemy, here he goes. So this is going to help somebody. Here he goes. He's, he's putting all these thoughts in my mind, like trying to give me fear. Like, don't do it. Like, this is scary. Like, how did you see yourself? Your eyes went open. I said, hold on. So some of you have to take your authority over the enemy who's trying to block you from going into the thing that God is showing you to do in the mighty name of Jesus. So I told him, I said, hold on, shut up. That's what I said to the enemy, right? And that's how you got to talk to him. He's under your feet. He's under your feet in the name of Jesus. And so I told him to shut up. And I, I had to silence my mind. I had to be at this class now in like a couple, like maybe an hour and a half, okay? This is the time I woke up. It was like an hour and a half for me to get there, to get myself together. And I was like, Lord, what are you saying? And so he was showing me that green represents prosperity and growth and newness, okay? And he was showing me that my eyes were fluttering because he was saying, the lashes, okay? Like, go do it. And green, it was going to bring me the prosperity. My God. So pay attention to your dreams. When I tell y'all, when I got that revelation, I could not get ready fast enough. I didn't even think I ate breakfast, but I knew that's where I was supposed to be in that class. So I sent that girl the rest of her money and I made it to the class and I took the class and I started. I didn't even tell anybody I was doing it. Okay. I called my cousin, one of my cousins. And I said, Hey, I'm doing this eyelash class. I really don't know what I'm doing, but just, you know, just come on over and let me do your lashes and you just pay me, you know, whatever you think you want to pay me. Right. So here's another thing. I didn't know what it was going to look like. I just knew that's where God was leading me and he was going to make up for the rest. So long story short, my cousin came over uh, the next day after I took the class and I did her lashes and she gave me like 50 bucks and she absolutely loved them. And looking back on them, they were a hot mess, right? But God had gifted me to do this thing. And as I, I worked in it, as I started it, God just began to, it just began to be a ripple effect. Like I posted her picture on, on um, I think it was Facebook at the time and just said, hey, you know, my cousin's lashes are looking good, blah, blah, blah. Hit me up. Something like that, I said. And then God just started sending the people. So there it is with some of you, you know, you're wondering where the clients are going to come from or, or where the business is going to come from or who's going to support you. You don't have to, to nag people and pressure them into supporting you. You just put your stuff out there. Whatever it is God is, is showing you to do, you just put it out there and he's going to send the people. So again, that just turned into a ripple effect, right? And so now I'm still working the job. And I'm, I'm, I'm getting these clients in, they're coming and I'm working from home. I'm working from my house. So initially it started to be family, you know, and then friends, you know, that I knew. And then people start contacting me that I didn't know. And I'm like, wait a minute, I can't have just everyone in my house. Right. And so I ended up, um, renting a space at a salon, but it was so hard you guys, because I couldn't balance the two. I still had to keep my job. And I was still working on my dream. Come on, somebody. Some of you all are in the same position right now. You're working your job and you're working the dream and you're wore out. And that's what it takes. This is what it's going to take for you to move and step out on faith. And this is going to bring me to the next point. Your step of faith. Uh, point number three. So this is a scary place and it's not easy. And so I was toggling the two. You know, I'm getting up at 6 a.m. to get my son ready for school, my God, to drop him off at school, to go through the rat race in traffic, to get to work, to work 8 to 5, sometimes 5.30, get off, go pick my son up from, from the after school care, okay, to come home, to, to do a client. And I'm new at lashing, okay? And so it was taking me like three hours to do a, a full set. And when I say eyelashes, I'm talking about the extension lashes for those of you who know. And so, you know, I'm not getting to bed until almost midnight, you know, between trying to feed my son and things like that. And, and his dad, you know, he had him on the days that he was supposed to have him and stuff like that too. But it was hard. So I'm, I'm doing all this every day, Monday through Friday, not going to bed until 12 o'clock, back up at six. I mean, I'm wore out. And then of course, working on the weekend. 
just fitting in who I could fit in. And so God brought me to that point where I was frustrated. And even though I was not making the money in my business that I was making at the corporate job, I knew what God was showing me in the crumbs, if you will, of what he was doing for me. He was showing me that I could make in about, about an hour or two what I would have made in a whole day, almost a whole day at work. So I, I saw the vision. I saw what he was doing, right? And so, so it is with some of you all, you know, as you get started and some of you who are in this place where, yeah, your money's not where where it needs to be right now, but you see the potential of it. You see what God is doing, right? And so that's the place he wants you to be in. This is the step of faith. Your faith is not going to look like everything balanced. Like, okay, when my money meets what I'm making now, then I'm going to step. No, that's not faith, right? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Not seen in the natural, but you see it in the spirit. So I saw in the spirit what this could be. And then again, God allowed me to wear myself out to where one of them was going to have to go and it wasn't going to be my business. And so that's how I got the faith to trust God and just to step out, okay, and, and, and follow his leading and just trust that he will provide for me. And you guys, when I stepped out on faith, if I can just say it this way, all hell broke loose, okay? I, my clients canceled for that week. Like everybody was just canceling left, right, left, right. Here comes the devil, like, I told you, you shouldn't have, you know, left your job and look at you. You look stupid, you know, everything. My water heater broke in my house, you guys. Like, my house was practically brand new. It had no business breaking down, but it broke down. So, like, come on, my back was against the wall. But God showed me in that, that he's a present help in the time of trouble. And when I tell you, he provided the resources for me to get my water heater fixed. For every client that canceled, I promise you all, he sent two more. Come on, somebody. These people would just, my phone would just ding, ding. I mean, let me tell y'all, there were days when I was in the corner of my house in a room, just sitting in the corner, crying, bawling, okay? Because I didn't know it was out of my hands, okay? And this is exactly where God needs you to be, where you let, let it go. When you take your hands off what he's trying to do and you use what's in your hands. So my job was to do the work. My job was to do the eyelashes and put myself out there. And some of you keep thinking this is going to fall from the sky and it's not. You've got to do your part. God is going to send the people. He's going to do the rest. He's going to give the increase. Okay. So you sow your seed of service and he's going to give the increase. Hallelujah. And so you guys, again, he just showed out in my life. He showed out in my life. He showed me that everything did in fact come from his hand, which is something that I did not realize before he had shaken my life. My God. Woo. I hope y'all still here. So this is going to bring me to point number four, which is increase. God is going to increase the very thing that he has placed in your hands, the very thing that he's prompting you to start doing. He will give the increase to it. And let me just read a, a quick scripture, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10 in the Amplify says, Now he who provides seed for the sower and bread for food will provide and multiply your seed for sowing that is your resources, and increase the harvest of your righteousness. And so, and that says, what shows itself in act of goodness, kindness, and love. So as you sow, God will provide more seed to sow, and he'll multiply your seed. And I'm a witness of that. I told you all, I had more month than I had money. And if I would not have sown where God was showing me to sow, it wouldn't have led to where I am now which is in Dallas, okay? And so as God increased uh, everything that I was doing in that business, he brought the people, he brought the women, every woman he brought to me to do their eyelashes. It was not about the lashes. It was a ministry unbeknownst to me. I didn't even know God had started the kingdom of God matters in my eyelash business, okay? So the women he was sending to me, they were going through the very things that God was pulling me out of. Whether it was a toxic relationship, a toxic marriage, they were in the corporate rat race and God was waking them up to come out of that. Whatever it was, God was using me to help them. So even though 
as hard as it was for me, as I was sowing my love, my patience, uh, my experience into these women, okay, money came by that. Yes, God increased me financially to where I started that business in 2017. And by 2019, God had moved me here to Dallas. But by that time, I had hit six figures. I'd made six figures in that business, okay? And, and he branched it out to where I wasn't just doing lashes. I, I became a lash educator and was training up other women to uh, do lashes. He was just sending the overflow. Come on. This was the beyond my wildest dreams. I didn't know that in 2016, that that's where God would have me do that next year from 2017 on up to 2019. And then let alone, he didn't tell me I was moving. Okay. It's a 2019. Okay. Or he started awakening me to that in 2018. And I did a, a testimony about that. And so I'll link it here for those of you who haven't seen it. But most of you who are subscribed to this channel and have been following my ministry, God led you to me because of that video, because he, because of my testimony, because he's doing that very thing in your life. He's shaking you. He's awakening you. He's moved some of you. He's, he's, you know, giving you the plans that he has for you and all of that, right? And so if I wasn't obedient and to do what God was, was showing me to do, I wouldn't be seeing all of this. I wouldn't have met all the women that I met and, and touched their lives and, 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 and been able to reach back in and help them, right? Through God, of course, through God, through his Holy Spirit. Again, he led all of them to me, right? But it never was about the lashes. OK, and so this is what what God means when he says that that our, our wisdom is not his wisdom. You know, our thoughts are not his thoughts. Our ways are not his ways. They're so much higher above. He has a deeper purpose for what he's he's showing you to do right now. Whatever he's telling you to start is a deeper purpose. You better know it. It's a deeper purpose. And you just keep walking it out as he reveals it to you. OK, and so, again, God is going to increase it, but you got to. Go back to step one and that's let him wake you up. And then step two, he's going to reveal what he placed in your hands, which you're already gifted with. He's going to reveal it to you and just be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Listen to what God's telling you to do. Recognize when the doors are closing and when the doors are open. OK, and the door that God opens is not going to be the easy door. It would have been easy for me to to take one of those jobs. But again, God shut the door. So there was no way I could could have even taken the job. Now, I could have kept toiling and applying for more jobs. But to be transparent, I had used all my vacation time going on interviews. Come on, somebody. You know, so I couldn't do nothing but stand and wait for God. <laughs> my God. But the, the most important thing that I've gained out of all this in being obedient is is my life, is getting my life. It has nothing to do with, with the material things. It, it's the fruit of, of what God has done on the inside of me, right? And that's bleeding out of me. It's the kingdom work. And this is where God is trying to get you to. And, and again, I'm still at the crumbs of it. So even when he moved me here to Dallas and I had to start over and I thought he was moving me here to continue to increase the eyelash business because I had hit a ceiling in, in like 2018, 2019, I knew it was time to expand, but I didn't see myself in St. Louis anymore. I just couldn't see it. And I didn't know where that place was. And again, I'll link my testimony, but I thought he was moving me here to expand because, you know, the land is bigger and things like that. But the whole time he was moving me here to expand his ministry. Right. And he took he took that lashing from up under me. That was just a stage, you know, a precursor to to this. And then even me right now, I'm, you know, I'm in this apartment and it's, it's beautiful. I love it, you know, and where God has me. And this is just the, the seed, the seed, how I'm doing my videos here, my little kitchen space. But this is the seed of what God has for me. And I know this. And so, who, my God, he wants to get you to the place where you know that you know that you know that he has your back, that you know that you know that you know that you can trust him when it doesn't look like you're going to make it, when it doesn't look like you're winning, when it doesn't look like what you want to do because it's not in your will, right? But when you, when you let go of self and allow God to do it, it's when you truly live. This is the Zoe life he wants to give you. 
So I'm just going to stop and end it here. I love you all so much. I pray that this message has been a blessing to you and that it has clarified what God has been doing in your life and what he's trying to show you. Okay. So again, I love you all with the love of Christ. Thank you so much to those of you who always support those of you who are subscribed. Thank you so much. Those of you who watch the videos and haven't subscribed, go ahead and do it. I see the numbers. I look at them <laughs> like half of y'all be clicking on don't subscribe. So just go ahead and subscribe. God is doing some wonderful things. And um, I want to thank all of you who are praying for me. Just know I pray for this family as well. I lift you all up. And I thank you all so much for sowing into this ministry. May the Lord continue to bless you 100 fold. And I will talk to you all soon. Get busy. Get to work. Get in your purpose. Start, start, start in the mighty name of Jesus.